Hi, lovelies. Welcome to the Flirting with Travel podcast. I'm Lexi. And I am Misty. And today we're talking about Misty's best trips. Enjoy. Okay, so we've talked about my best trips, but what were some of your best trips and your favorite ones? I think a lot of, um, some of my best trips, actually half of my best trips were with you. I mean, surprise, surprise. You didn't plan at all. Some of them were actually just like spontaneous combustion. I feel like you're lying. That's no. okay. No. You know what? One of my favorite trips was Cuba. I think of all time, I really enjoyed Cuba. Mm-hmm. And I want to say a lot of the times, I think the best trips are those like that shock you. Mm-hmm. Because I think Cuba was one of those where we felt the spirit of the country and yeah. the people. And it was like so encompassing. Like we loved how affirming the men were. Oh my goodness. That is like the best thing when you walk around and you're like, beautiful. You're like, oh, me? <laughs> No. In my sweaty glow? Thank you. I mean, and I, I was, was glowing. I don't know. I We did Cuba basic. Like, looking at some of these pictures of these people, I'm like, well, damn, shit. I went in a maxi dress and yeah. my fro out, and I didn't even style my fro. But the people who are doing, like, the Cuba that are taking the pictures in the cars, I think they're only going to Havana. They're not doing, like, a, a six-city right. tour. Yeah, it would be hard, and and the and because you're staying in Cata- Casa Particulars, mm-hmm. like which I thought was a really nice part. So if you do talk about uh, cultural immersion and really being part of it, mm-hmm. staying in somebody's house, having them make you breakfast, and kind of a like a a small interaction with them, it's nice. No, it was really cool. I think the breakfasts were probably some of the best meals I had, but also because those were the meals that they didn't like throw meat diced up into everything (laughs) they were really like you're gonna you're gonna get some uh protein yeah no i i loved it i loved the live music i really enjoyed the music i thought zara lease of uh the cuban adventure tours our tour guide was phenomenal so good i enjoyed the salsa dancing even though i got tired like the pace was just it was the traveling from city how because it took us like three to four hours of driving for each place we went and sometimes more and then because we were on a tour of what like nine people I think so, because it was a family of, like, mm-hmm. eight. <laughs> so it couldn't have been nine people. The family had six people, two kids, two moms, and the husband and wife. So mm-hmm. six plus, that was six, so 12. Yeah. Oh, man, that was a bigger tour than I thought. So it was, like, half and half with the family. Yeah. They were moving at their own pace, and then everyone else. Totally enjoying it, how they wanted to enjoy it. But I really love Cuba. I loved the salsa dancing. I loved the warm spirit. Everybody was really friendly. I mean, from an affordable standpoint, it's not that expensive, but there's also that not that many options to spend money on. Yeah. And even, like, I think some of the little trinkets. I like the, the wood jewelry. Oh, mm-hmm. Some of my necklaces have broken since, like... My bracelet broke. And I still have all the parts. Like, I'm going to put it back together. <laughs> you know what? This is what I got from Cuba in the little cup. <laughs> right. Oh, no, it is. I just have, like, a little jewelry, like, broken jewelry basket. And I was like, one day I'm going to put it all back together. You're going to get you a little jewelry making kit? I might. Ah. Uh, so, I don't know. I, Cuba was one of my favorites. I loved it. We mm-hmm. had a good time. Um, Singapore. I think I talked about Singapore previously, but I really like Singapore. It's mm-hmm. one of the top. What I realized on um, countries that I really enjoy mm-hmm. is I like forward-leaning countries that are technology, like, technologically advanced. Um, clean, but still like homey feeling. I don't want to call you on it, but I love that your first example was Cuba. And then you jump to, I like technologically advanced countries because there was no internet in Cuba. No, like it wasn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't move there though. I wouldn't move to Cuba simply because they didn't have internet. <laughs> like, but you would move to Singapore? I would move to Singapore. I would. I started looking for jobs there. So but it's Dubai. why I love Dubai. I think Dubai and Singapore are very similar. Also, one of the architects that built um, a lot of the buildings, specifically like the Burj, mm-hmm. he worked in Singapore for a long time. Okay. So he went, uh, he was born in UAE, went to the States for university, college, graduated from there with his bachelor's and master's, then got a job in Singapore, mm-hmm. worked there constructing some really amazing buildings because they have some really beautiful mm-hmm. architecture as well. And then he went back to UAE. Mm-hmm. And was started to, and like, did, like, the Burj. So, Singapore is the one place that has, like, three things. And then the, that building that has, like, the three pillars and the thing on uh-huh. top of Marina it. Bay Sands, yes. Oh. Uh, the tallest pool in the world. Nice. Did you swim there? Yes. We stayed there. And so, the thing about it is that it's you... so damn fancy. You can't go to the pool if you don't stay there. You are so damn fancy. 
I like that you ever <laughs> in your life want to pretend like you are not that fancy. I'm not. Well, I mean, okay, so we stayed there during Chinese New Year's. That mm-hmm. was the crazy part because it was so expensive. I didn't even know it was Chinese New Year's. But it was a really nice pool. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a, actually, it's like a kind of a regular infinity pool. It's just so far up that it has amazing views. Does it have like a glass bottom or anything? No. Because oh. I've heard of like some places that do that. And I was like, that seems... That's too much for me. Yeah. You know, it's like a, I don't know, do they have lawsuits there? Country. It's like a Sioux culture. Some countries are not Sioux cultures. That's true. Okay, so in Singapore, like, the technology, what about, like, what what kind of drew you other than technology to, like, feeling like you want to live there? Um, I really liked how clean it was. Historically, it has very segregated districts, mm-hmm. but because it's an integrated type of culture, it has the, the Malaysians, mm-hmm. um, Chinese came over and worked there. Because mm-hmm. it was settled by the Dutch, right? The Dutch yeah. came, uh, Raffles was there, he built... And then they, like, as they brought workers over, they made little areas for them. So mm-hmm. you have, like, Indian town, Chinatown, uh, Malaysian, and then across, like, the river was where they set, like, the Brits and the Dutch up. <laughs> Seriously, that's how it is. <laughs> they have a piece of water separating us. They have, like, they, they literally have the water separating. Um, however, um, they kind of give out houses, right? So they have, like, one of those, it's not communist or socialist, but it has that theory because mm-hmm. you get an apartment and they, they rent cap it. And they um, they don't allow them to sell for astronomical prices. Which is crazy because they're so rich. Right. But also a building, they have percentages mm-hmm. based off of the population mm-hmm. that you can't have more than this percentage of a certain ethnicity in the building. Mm-hmm. So you'll never just walk into a building that's like all Chinese. Because oh. if the population, like comparatively speaking, is 47% mm-hmm. uh, Chinese in the building, you'll never have more than like 47%. That The government caps it. Interesting. Which means that you have to go to another building. So does it seem like a more cohesive society because of that? I thought it was an interesting mix because a lot of people got along. They also have many people are trilingual there. Like naturally they grow up speaking English, um, Cantonese, and whatever their mother language is. And in mm-hmm. school they teach it to them that mm-hmm. way. So you take a language, you take your mother language, uh, your mother's tongue language, and then you learn a third language. That is amazing. I don't know. I just really yeah. enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool. Plus, they have a lot of, like, embassies, ambassadors, homes, like, consulates. It's the financial capital of the world. It just had, it was really nice. And they mm-hmm. had, like, the historical side of it where they had the old homes and it's a beachy. I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. Great food. Mm-hmm. Like, I liked the street food. It was really good. Street food in some places is so good. You never even need to go to a restaurant. Which is why I like Thailand. That's why I go yeah. to Bangkok so much. I love the street food. So what is your top street food place? Ooh. Thailand, because probably it's the spiciest. Yeah. Singapore had like this chicken rice thing they like mm-hmm. to do, but it wasn't as spicy. Mm-hmm. You know, I haven't been to um, Korea though. And they say oh. Seoul has such good food. Well, Such then, good food. I don't even feel like I can really have an opinion on it because I haven't really hit that country. <laughs> and I didn't like Japan. Japanese food was so bland to me. You, the curries were trash. What? Ooh, you are so rude sometimes. Did you like it? Yes, I love Japanese curry. Oh, it's so bland. So what I will salt, say. pepper. No, some of the food is flavor, really about flowers. tasting the actual ingredients. Wait. What ingredients what, was I tasting? What Japanese curry did you have? Was it just when we went to the maid cafe? Yes. Oh, That's no, that experience. that food was so... Okay, that food was disgusting. So, <laughs> so you can imagine, that's what I've set my tone off of. No, that's not Japanese food. Like, literally, you're going to that for the experience. And so for people that don't know, maid cafes are literally cafes where, like, the young women dress up in, like, French maid costumes, and they speak in, like, these high-pitched children's voices, and we got, like, curry, and our food... Everything about it is made to be cute. But we got our food and we got this curry and the rice is shaped like a little teddy bear. And then the curry is across it like a blanket. And then they write on it in ketchup. Now, mind you, they don't typically put ketchup on rice or curry. That was a special thing that they did at that cafe because it was part of their like cutesy culture. So that's not how their curry tastes. I didn't like the soba either. Like, wait, did you do soba or like ramen or? I did soba. Well, soba is like a summer dish. It's supposed to be about the fresh noodles. <laughs> the noodles you are know? terrible. They're like little worms. 
I felt like I was eating thick ass worms. Oh, udon. Yeah, I don't really do udon. Udon is terrible. Because it is. It's like, and then they took the tempura and then they put it in the ramen. Okay. Why would you fry a food to put it in water? I'm not gonna sit here and defend all their food. It's I feel good. like that's what you're going through because it was. I was so I feel happy like I'm trying. when I found McDonald's. I was so happy. I was like, oh, food I can eat. <laughs> no, food in Japan is good. It is unexpected and like it's not a street food culture. Oh my gosh! Remember when I got there and you were like breakfast? I left breakfast for you, Misty. There's rice in the rice cooker. There's some miso soup. <laughs> yes. And I left you some seaweed crackers. I was like, that is the rest of the fucking food. That's the food? traditional breakfast. Oh, my goodness. You were struggling so with food there, though. I was so hungry. Like, when you went to uh, to dinner at Yukino's. <laughs> dinner was pot stickers. What else? Oh, miso soup. Mm-hmm. And some white rice. No, okay, so one. And they don't like to give you a lot of rice. She that- hand makes those pot stickers, and they are phenomenal, though. I was so hungry. I thought it was real food. Like, I thought we were really eating. We had actually went to the grocery store, <laughs> picked up food for her to get home and determine that it was too late for her to actually cook, and so she oh. threw together some food. So I got pot stickers, rice, and miso soup. I was like, oh. No, well, so, I mean, you don't get a culture that stays that thin by eating big meals. Yeah, if they only are drinking flavored water, of course they're staying thin. Oh my goodness. I'm covered. Anyway, so... so Jap- Japan, Japanese food was Japanese not your food favorite. was horrible, which could make a trip really bad, but I was visiting you, so that's it, it won't ever go on like a worst trip list. It sure couldn't. We did so much in like 12 hours. We did. We did. We partied. We got on a train the next day. We... I, I don't know. I just I like I really like like cultures that do incorporate street mm-hmm. food. Mm-hmm. So it has to have some kind of affordable element. Like mm-hmm. I don't want to go to a place that's completely break in the bank. Like I have a budget. My budget goes on certain things. Like yeah. I spend my money on hotels, mm-hmm. right? Airfare, airfare travel. I prefer some cheap transportation. Mm-hmm. I yes. don't mind taking like buses and trams and stuff. If yeah. it's like super cold or really far, I'll do an Uber. Gotcha. A taxi or a lift. But, like, a, that's where I like. And then, like, my fourth country I really enjoyed was, I think I, Bruges was a really nice surprise. That I was. would never go back, but. Really? Nah, it's like a sleepy town. You did it one yeah. time. It was good. It was so unexpected. I think what made it amazing is how unexpectedly great it was. Right. But I would go back. But I think that you can get a lot of those types of feels in Europe in like the off. Yeah. If you get off of the beaten track and go into some of those, a lot of those are historically, they're like old. Mm -hmm. They've maintained that architecture. It's a slower paced life. I bet you France has like six towns that are just like that. Exactly. Italy probably has a bunch. Mm -hmm. We just always go to like the bigger staples. Oh, they tend to be easy to get to. I was trying to find like... Oh, I think it's like Alsace, and I'm sure I'm saying it wrong in France, and it's supposed to be one of the most charming towns, but it's like impossible to get to. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's impossible, because somebody's going to be like, no, it's super easy. You just take this plane, this train, this bus, and you walk. <laughs> Boom, yeah. you're there, right? Because right? imagine yeah. if you, and then this, oh, you know what? Mm-hmm. This is kind of a caveat, but one of the things on how you determine what kind of luggage to carry where you're going mm-hmm. is trying to determine where you're going, how old it is, what the streets are. True. Because remember, I was carrying my, I was pulling my little rolly suitcase <laughs> through cobble, 16th century cobblestone. Oh, that was rough. That is rough. Like you damn near had to carry the whole thing because mm-hmm. it is mid-century cobblestone. It's so rough. And yeah. a backpack is perfect for that at that point. But a, a rolly suitcase is not. Mm-hmm. Also, for trains, having everything really, like, compounded. So, okay, yeah. So, I did love... Um, and then Singapore has, like, the F1 series that goes through all the streets and everything. Really? Yeah, they do uh, F1 there normally... I think it's... Hmm. Abu Dhabi's the end of the year. I think there's this towards the beginning. But it's... They have routes mm-hmm. and stuff. So, it's like a... Oh, you, that's cool. Yeah, you go through, like, a metropolitan feel to, like, a beach feel. It's mm-hmm. a city-state island. So, it's really small. So, like, theoretically, could you be sitting at a cafe and have, like, F1 cars driving by you outside? You could. Oh, that would be fun. So, that's... I mean, that's one of the places they do it. Mm-hmm. So, um... I mean, I don't know. So, I really enjoyed it there. And then, maybe... Where is my other favorite... Um, mm, London was a really good trip, but okay. that was like a perfectly planned, executed trip and everything went according to schedule. It like did. there were no hiccups in that trip. 
No, there were no hiccups. Other than some people doing like really intense makeup, that was probably the only thing I'd consider a hiccup because they were really taking us away from breakfast. I forgot who it was who was doing that, but someone. I mean, some people really don't even need to eat, so I'm not sure like why they would be concerned or worried. I mean, I wasn't concerned. It was the rest of the party oh, it was that you. thought that See? food. Oh, oh no, I wasn't doing makeup. I didn't. I wasn't. <laughs> I did my makeup, but I thought that's fine if we don't eat today. <laughs> We're just going to live. We're breathing in this air. First off, in those countries, breakfast is a croissant and some coffee. That's not even breakfast. That's a snack. Oh, my goodness. So I don't even understand why people are upset. Exactly. not really eating. Let me tell you, when I was in in Marrakesh, Mm -hmm. and we stayed at this Riyadh, and Mm -hmm. it was really... um, So we stayed in the Riyadh in the Medina, Mm -hmm. and that was one of my first international trips Mm -hmm. as an adult, and I didn't understand (laughs) what I was booking. I just knew I wanted to stay something like local. So Riyadh is a square, has an open center in mm-hmm. it with a fountain because um, they believe that water is God. But the Medina is where the marketplace is. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how far you had to walk into it to get Ooh. there. So um, my then boyfriend was like, I'm going to go get the guy to carry our bags. I was like, cool, because this is before I was team carry on. <laughs> so I'm sitting in a taxi and he's like, gone. And I'm like, he's been gone for 10 minutes. Like, did he get snatched? Right. So then I was like, hmm. <laughs> 15 minutes. I was like, shit. What? He's still not back. I was like, so how far was this hotel, sir? Mm-hmm. And the guy's like, uh, I don't know. About 22 mm-hmm. minutes. I'm like, something is wrong. Something <laughs> is wrong and has happened to this man. What am I going to do? My phone didn't work. I was like, how do oh, I call shit. the police? Maybe they snatched him, but why would they snatch him? Like, I didn't get it. And when he finally right. came back, he came back like 23 minutes in with like sweat. <laughs> he was like, you really know how to pick him. You really know how to pick him, Misty. And the guy with the little crate barrel, <laughs> he's like, let's go. So we're walking and look, he was actually really walking. It takes like 15 minutes to get oh. out of where we were staying. So you have to walk into the Medina, mm-hmm. pass a lot of the stalls mm-hmm. because the, um, it's a, a huge marketplace, right? Yeah. So we're walking in with a guy pushing our bags and I'm just like, where are we going? Mm-hmm. And then we take a right and then we start going down these narrow alleys and you just see like little cutouts and doorways and they're like clay. They mm-hmm. look like little clay buildings. Yeah. Right. So we're just walking. I'm just like, someone could pop out at any yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we finally get to the place. You walk in, but you walk in. It's like a reprieve. It's just like, oh, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, this is nice. This is this is nice. Nobody's gonna kill us. But it happened that we were as just us and this British uh, friends. There were two friends, and they were on like a little trip. Mm-hmm. It was just the two of us in this Riyadh, and Ooh, it's things like, like that freaked me out. It started getting scary. You know what? I will say that Morocco wasn't my best trip, but I will tell this story just because it was really funny. Mm-hmm. Whenever we would walk around just to explore the area, it wasn't that big, but yeah. it was um, three stories with different rooms. And then we were trying to figure out how to get mm-hmm. to the courtyard. The guy was like, he looked like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> he was like this tall, really pale, uh, dark hair man. And he just pop up out of this, good evening. <laughs> how can no I help way. you? I was like, hey, hey, we just wanted to know where to go. He was like, it's that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> So we leave. And every time we leave our room, somebody come in the room and tidy it up. Every time? Every time. That sounds amazing, but also like tiring for them. Because you know you have someone who's just stationed watching your door like, is it going to open? That's what you walk out the door to. Like, it's just, it's, how do they know? Where are they? Are they? Yeah. Right. Like, like, where's this guy popping up from? He's just got cameras. He's just watching <laughs> you. Right. It was like 4, 4.30 or 5. I wanted to see the sunrise. So I went up to the rooftop. And he's still there? I swear to God, he was standing in the corners like... <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> I'm like, it's morning time though. I know. <laughs> I don't know. Morocco was a cool experience. I would like to go back again. Uh, Marrakesh was nice. It's aggressive, but I, it's nice. I do want to go, but I just feel like you have to be in a certain energy for that because it's so. Like I've heard, you can get lost in the uh, oh in the market. Real talk. It is so easy. I mean, like, it's like any place that sells the same 18 things, right? Mm-hmm. So a perfume stand starts to look like a perfume stand. Right. And um, I think one of the other shocks of going there was I expected them to speak Arabic. 
majority. Oh, I expected them to speak Arabic. Mm-hmm. So when they were speaking to me in French, I was thrown. <laughs> like, I was like, where am I? What is this? What? And so we're in a French restaurant with a French menu because it was the, in Casablanca, it was the hotel attached. And I'm just like, what is going on here? Who are these people? Which is ironic because you speak some Arabic, but like not that much. So I like that you were totally surprised. Right. It was surprised like, surprised you don't speak this language. I don't speak. <laughs> right. It was like I was hurt. That, exactly. <laughs> Imagine. I was just like, I thought I was going to have some kind of bearing. Oh, okay. So at least you'd have like a baseline because you can right. make it work. But we okay. did the train from Casablanca to Marrakesh. Mm-hmm. So we took um, one of their public trains. We did do the first class cabin because, listen, there's just some things that you should just splurge on. On a train, yes. Yes. 100% agree. Exactly. We'll never, I just ever take a <laughs> second class train in my life. Never. My life. Sometimes they don't have seats. They definitely don't have air. Mm. People don't wear deodorant in a lot of places in the world because it's just not a staple for them. Do they do food? They did not do food on this train. So a four-hour train ride with no food. Right. I was on a 12-hour train ride with no food. I had like a few snacks, and I thought for sure they were going to have food. And I was so mad. They didn't even have a food cabin. You know, I was afraid to even leave my bags to check for a food cabin. So maybe <laughs> they did have a luxurious food cabin, and I was stuck in hell. Well, I don't know. I was with him, so I was fine because I just went to sleep. I was just like, you're on patrol. You're on patrol. But I did wake up and it like the scenery changed a bunch. Mm-hmm. It went from rolling hills to wood, not to woods, but to like flat land. Mm-hmm. So I think that was really nice. And I would say that if you're going from Casablanca to Marrakesh, take the train. It was mm-hmm. nice. And then realize, especially if, if you're American and are not used to other cultures, remember that people have no sense of space. Oh, yeah. So one of the things was he kept getting so angry. When people are all up Because they him. were like right there on him. And he would like, bro, back up. And they just don't understand. They're like, I don't get it. What's the problem? I'm in line. You're in line. We're in line. What's yeah. the problem? Because we mm-hmm. took a taxi to the train station, bought our tickets there, and then went um, ahead. So we didn't. it wasn't like a pre-bought. I think we had known we were going to take the train. Mm-hmm. We just didn't really pre-buy the tickets. That'd be like that sometimes. So did you buy like leather? Because leather goods are huge there. I didn't, which is why I want to go back. I mm-hmm. don't think I shopped appropriately. Yeah. But we did eat. We walked around. It was weird because I thought it was going to be warm and it was cold. Why is this always it's for like, you? It's like, it's the, I don't even understand. It was September, so I didn't understand why it was cold. Have you ever taken a warm vacation? I take warm, at, at the beach, yes. Because you are always surprised. You're like, what? Cold weather exists? You know, I don't know. I think it's when I leave Kuwait, I'm expecting everywhere to be 2,000 degrees. Like Lucifer has been bro- blowing his breath on the ground. <laughs> I show up and I'm like, God, it's uh, 70s. It's chilly. <laughs> I don't know. But Mar- Morocco is really pretty. Mm-hmm. It's, they have like the best doors. Mm-hmm. I was looking, I was online today and I saw Tunisia, some mm-hmm. of the pictures of the doorways. Oh, I bet that's beautiful. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. They had some really beautiful um, doorways. I will go just to see the doors. Would you buy a door and like try and ship it back? I really, if I, if I get that kind of money that my house can afford that kind of door. Yeah, sure. will. Okay. So what is the best thing that you have like bought and brought back on a trip? I buy a lot of artwork. I typically buy artwork. My favorite piece of art I got from Cuba and it's made out of like they, she put it's painted, but it's also made out of a lot of local ingredients so it had like coffee beans and tobacco, ground tobacco, and it's integrated into the picture. Oh, that's cool. So that's my favorite one. But one of the things I want to start doing now is actually buying pieces of furniture mm-hmm. from places. So like when we do go to Morocco, mm-hmm. I, I want to get like a, a really pretty dresser. Yeah. And if I have like a nice house, mm-hmm. a nice door. But I don't even know how much that costs. You know what? Bali had a bunch of stuff like that. And I was like, man, I want to buy some woodwork made in Bali. Your oh, stuff is yeah, they do do some stuff. India has some really good stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I've not been to India, but maybe this year we can go. Yeah. No, because things Hollis like that I would want to get. Because I get it. Oh. I know you don't have much time left. That's how I feel about Venice. There's not a lot of time because it is on the downward slope. Damn. Yeah. The same with Taj Mahal, though. I heard that they're they limiting they're both, guests. Yeah, because it's sinking now and it's like doing some weird thing. I just feel like you should be able to shore up the ground with the technology and money that is in the world, particularly India, because they have, like, what, the largest concentration of billionaires of any country in the world? Wow. 
I could imagine, especially with the tech industry. But also, like, I don't understand why it's sinking, like you said, because Singapore, they're expanding the island size mm -hmm. by, re like, uh, land reclamation. Which a bunch of places are doing. Dubai has all their palms from the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's fucking up the environment some way, and we're, like, yeah. shifting how the earth is. However, you know, like I'm saying, it's, it's not unfeasible. I mean, if you're going to call it a world wonder, I think you can save it. I would save it your money. How much money in tourism do you think they make from that? System? So much. So why would you even allow somebody to publish an article to deter people? Or oh, maybe no. they're trying to drive traffic. Oh, more people will go because they think it's singing. Sinking. Yes, it's true. It's like uh, Dubrovnik. Game of Thrones was filmed there. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just like the amount of people that are landing there. It's just like it's too much. For I did hear they're trying to stop people from going there. We've talked about some places that you're kind of ready to go to. You said India, but like, where's your dream destination? Currently, um, Cape Town. Ooh, why Cape Town? I don't know. I think, I think it has really great artwork. I've mm -hmm. seen some of my friends who've come back with some of the artwork and mm -hmm. statues and stuff. I'm like, oh, I want to go there for that. Nice. And it's not even for the attractions because I don't think that I, none of it's like, oh my God, I got to do it. It's mm -hmm. literally, I just want to see the artwork. I mean, I'd laugh at you, but I've wanted to go places for less. Would you take a surfing lesson if you were down there? Don't they have shark infested waters? I mean, I don't think I'd use the word infested. There might be sharks, but surfing's also huge down there. I want to say like the World Surfing Competition, and there's an actual like acronym for it. One did of you did you there. remember some of my water stories? You're right. That's true. Yeah, we shouldn't sure. put you in the water, right? Because you so. try and drown people. If I already think that there's sharks in the water, even if there isn't sharks in the water, yep. I'm going to be nervous that there are sharks in the water. A guppy then, touches you. It's ah, over. Been <laughs> Have you ever been bitten by a shark? There's a really small pool of people. No, you haven't either. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, South Africa, is that on like your 2020 roadmap or where are you thinking? So, <laughs> my 2020 roadmap. Um... The the biggest thing on my 2020 roadmap is to quit my job. <laughs> so it's a good start. I, mean, I don't know financially if I could do everything. Yeah, that's true. But I don't know. Um, I definitely want to do South America. So 2020 mm -hmm. does have Argentina, Chile, and somewhere else in South America, maybe um, Brazil. You it's know, funny that you bring that up. I think we're gonna hear about that. I know because I never saw any pictures on Instagram, so there was nothing to even not really a experience. single photo. So our sister Dion Bay likes to travel, and she refuses to post anything or show you anything. You I would just, never know where she went. I never know where she's going. It's like secret agent level of travel. I almost think she's like a CIA spy or something. It's the same way that Misty is like she won't name a friend's name or a Hold proper on. pronoun. Stop. Pause. We were on the same team for a second. Yeah, no, totally. Did you forget how it felt to be I on just... the same team? Because you just deviated from that team. Going back to where you were originally directed. No, I get you. I just would like to say that I'm probably the only one that's not terribly suspicious in my family. Because the other two are acting like they're hiding state secrets. Which, I mean, is great. Because if I committed a crime with you guys, I'd feel good that Diambe would never share a single <laughs> detail. Or ever take a photo. Or anything. And then you would... Just well, all you're ever going to give us is photos like this. Maybe the orangutan could take a better picture. Shade! <laughs> Just give the orangutan oh. your phone. <laughs> Shade. I am... Ugh. Well, I, South Africa. That you have to have business to share, and when you don't have any business, you don't share it. South Africa sounds fun. I thought so. Where else are you trying to go? I just told you South America. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. When you deviated... And then forgot we were on the same team for like 8.8 .8 seconds. Okay. Argentina. I'm happy that you could get that off your chest though. Argentina. Mm -hmm. I'm going for the steak. Man, steak would probably be really good there. Yes. I'm going to put this out there. I'm a vegetarian. But <laughs> Colombia, that was one of those experiences. I thought I was going to eat meat again just for a minute because I was in a steakhouse with an open kitchen. They sat me like right next to it and I'm smelling it and I was salivating. Just literally just smelling, seeing them bring out that raw meat and then just barely touch it to the fire. It was like an open flame and they're like, S -s 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 -s, that's it. And I was like, that's exactly how you cook a steak. I need that in my life. And then I thought I will also have like 
the worst diarrhea, ever. vomiting, stomach cramps while I'm in Colombia. So then I thought, you know what? That's fine. We'll just have this tuna steak and like call it okay. And when I say vegetarian, I mean pescatarian because I know there are some like honest to God vegans that will not let a pescatarian call themselves a vegetarian. Because you're not. You're a pescatarian. Yeah, and a vegan is not a vegetarian. They're a vegan. Yeah, but they say you can't call yourself a vegetarian unless you're vegan. Which to me, I'm like, then why do you have two different words? Because vegetarians drink milk. So that is a an, uh, lacto-vegetarian. And an ovo-vegetarian <laughs> eats eggs. And you have your lacto ovo Everybody has categories, right? Mm-hmm. Black people, we have different sex. There's, over, there's, there's classism. What would you call that in foodisms? I don't know. Kind of food there, like a, I wouldn't say there's a hierarchy, but some I'm sure someone feels like there's a hierarchy of it. True. Nevertheless, I bet you that steak, oh, that's probably a fresh ass steak with no hormones. Well, you remember in Cuba they didn't have oh, you couldn't eat the cows. Was the cow sacred or was it because they produced milk? But the I think cows they looked milk. emaciated. Like they looked so skinny. Well, I mean you can't you, eat them anyway. There was nothing to eat. I felt like everything was imported there. How Other than sugar. Imported from where? Not That's America. That's a good question. But literally sugar seemed to be the only thing that was like massively grown. This is true. They had chickens. Remember the little girl? She was like, oh my God, it's a chicken. And she's running around following a chicken. She's like, what is their name? Oh, she was serious about that chicken. That chicken was like, get the fuck away from me. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> she was like, what is their name? So I was like, That's baked, fried, broiled, uh, grilled. <laughs> you are so disrespectful <laughs> to like, children. <sighs> I was like, babe, you're going to eat the chicken tonight. Enjoy. Right? I was like, we've seen you eating chicken. Don't act like it's sacred now. That was his cousin right there. You're welcome. Okay. So the, those are kind of like my bucket list. Um, I want to do South America. I will do, um, hopefully I can do South, like South Africa. It's kind of one mm. of my things I want to do. I really want to go to Budapest. Really? You know, you've been trying to get me to go to Budapest forever. I've been trying to get everybody to go to Budapest. I'm going to have to go by myself. See, this is the thing. This is why you end up on solo travel. Because you're trying to get people to go on trips and they keep bailing out. No, let me put it like this. You haven't said, I'll go to Budapest with you. I've said, hey, I'm stranded in Europe. I got to figure out what to do. Go to Budapest. (laughs) It wasn't like, go to Budapest and I'll meet you. I couldn't meet you. I have a whole job that's locking me down right now. I don't like to travel. They won't let me live my best life. No work life. I understand. So maybe what I was doing is waiting to go to Budapest when I could go with you because I can't share that experience unless it's with you. man. Look at how you were able to change that. Turn it around. Right? This is like political. What's that called? I would say warfare, but it really isn't that. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, so I think Budapest, I would like to go there mm-hmm. and Well, why Budapest? I have no idea. I think it's just the I don't know it's and then really actually when I explain it, it's gonna sound so nasty as like why would you wanna do that? I really wanna go to the public open pools that are always yellow in the pictures that I'm trying to figure out how mm-hmm. they clean it's like the little hot springs they have. Yeah. They're yellow though? Well, I see yellow stones around the ones I always want to go to. Oh, okay. I think maybe one of the centers in town has mm-hmm. yellow tile or yellow painted buildings. Oh, okay. So it's not like the water is just randomly no, it's not that algae yellow. green either. No, I don't mind hot springs because, like, we did a hot spring in Japan. You know, we didn't do a true hot spring. I, that so I I want to do a true hot spring. Maybe if I ever go to Iceland. Mm-hmm. or for the Northern Lights. Oh, no, you know I, I would yeah. love to do the Northern Lights because that's another that one fun. of the world wonders that's starting to become. That is, it's harder and harder to see them because like Iceland, they're just building hotels all around and all of the lights that are in, like infiltrating the cities mm-hmm. are knocking out the ability to see the Northern Lights. So, but you know, our sister that doesn't mm-hmm. post pictures or ever, she did Northern did Lights in Alaska. It. True. Never saw a picture of that either. Yeah. Had to have been amazing. You know what, though? As they say, if you don't have a picture, did it really happen? Did it really? So, I don't know. Maybe she's never left the States and she just goes into hiding. <laughs> she just turned her phone off. Right. Talking about, call my Bahamian line. Are you even there? <laughs> okay. So, your best trips. Now, we kind of talked about you being fancy, particularly in Singapore, staying at the... Marina Bay Sands fancy it's the only way you can go to their pool no totally i would and you have to book two nights to do actually enjoy the pool because like by the time you check in it's after three Mm -hmm. it's dark and if you want to get like good pictures no i understand to enjoy the pool you have to have a suite for like a week and (laughs) bottle service all of it 
I get it. That's the only way. It is. That's so. life. That's how you know you're living. Okay, so where is some of your other favorite hotels? Or is that like one of your favorites? You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. Um, we got a basic room at that hotel because it still was really expensive. It was just for our basic room was like 700 a night. It was a basic ass room. I thought you were over here full Kehlani. Ain't nothing about me basic, but okay. No, I couldn't repeat the same experience because I had tricked them into that really expensive room in Barcelona. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you're like, fool me once. <laughs> hey. Oh, you know what? One of my favorite properties actually is Encore at the Wynn. Really? Uh, in Vegas, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that hotel. It's a really nice room. It has. It's a really nice room. It's mm -hmm. got really nice amenities. They're spacious. Mm -hmm. um, my now guy, we got a suite at my Wynn. My now guy. <laughs> well, yeah, because we have different. I'm so with you. We got a suite at the Wynn, mm -hmm. and they're huge with floor-to-ceiling windows, and all the hotels have floor to ceiling windows. Strip that views. is nice. And at night, it's, the lights are beautiful. You know what I always remember about the wind? They use lemongrass products. And yeah. that is how I learned I was allergic to lemongrass. Yeah. I was like, why am I breaking out in hives and disgusting right now? I'm just itchy all over. Right. And then it occurred to me that I decided to wash my body and then lotion in lemongrass products. And I was just slowly dying. Well, they still use them. And every time I smell it, I think of you. You think of me slowly Memories. dying? Yes. Yeah. I think she can't use this. I should get a bunch of it and bring it to her. That is so rude. rude. You know what? I feel like as you get into your older years, you've become a lot more mean. And it's really come out in some of your stories that we've gotten here. So that's, I'm happy that the world <laughs> gets to know about this side of you. Now they understand that I'm experiencing extreme isms in life <laughs> and I'm fighting back. Fight the power. Okay. Okay, public enemy. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> you know, calm it down. You can't allow anybody to bully you. Now moving on. Okay, so we talked about your favorite places and some of the favorite places that you stayed and like the gifts that you brought back. Any what I mean, well we didn't talk about the gifts that you brought back. What what kind of gifts do you get people when you come back? I just want to know. Ask them for a friend. I don't. I literally do not like picking up gifts. If you wanted to go, mm -hmm. you should go and get it yourself. That's oh. really how I feel. I feel that I can come back with my memories and I can verbally share it with you, mm. show you some pictures, and say, man, you should have went and tried that. That doesn't hit the same as a necklace, though. It Who really has space doesn't. for all this stuff? Then I got to start thinking about other people on my vacation. I am on a vacation. Mm -hmm. I am there to kind of enjoy. I bring mom back jewelry. Mm -hmm. Um... If there's something like some food, I mean, I brought mom back cheese, but it's still in my refrigerator. So did I actually bring her back the cheese or am I going to eat the cheese? It sounds like she will never see this cheese. She will never see this cheese. Well, you know, like omiyage is uh, a big Japanese culture. Like you bring stuff back. And if you don't, it means that you're saying you specifically don't care about the people who you didn't bring stuff back for. I think that forms who you are today because you always think about people on trips. I'm like, why are we bringing these people back? Where I were we? So. We were somewhere and we we're like bringing chocolate. So we were in Bruges and they have really amazing chocolate. So but good. she's just like, we have to bring people back chocolate. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll bring some people back some chocolate. Mm -hmm. So we're picking out chocolate and then I'm like, well, how much is this chocolate? It's expensive. She was like 15 euro. I'm like, fuck these people. I don't <laughs> like these people. I'm not bringing you that damn chocolate back. I brought two things of chocolate, and then one of them I ate myself because I was like, I don't even like you. The hell, I'm going to give wow. you some chocolate for it. I'll tell you, maybe you should go yourself. I'm not giving you a goddamn chocolate. Oh, no, I always identify at least like five people. Hell even, no. Five even, people. Like Switzerland, I, you know what, I have not done my due diligence on getting the chocolates to people. They're sitting in my fridge, but I brought back a bunch to give to like the individual people because I'm like, oh, they're going to know I went here. They're going to know I eat great chocolate, so they're going to want to eat good chocolate too. Mm hmm. I'm gonna tell them how delicious it was. That is so delicious. I might be, get one big box, invite everybody over to share the box. Well, like, I'll do that at work. And I'm definitely not bringing stuff back for people at work. <laughs> okay. I wish I would. I wish I would. I bet they wish you would too, though. <laughs> they probably wish they could try yeah, that Belgian chocolate. My intonation on wood and their intonation on wood is completely right? different. Go yourself. Spend your money and go to that. You'll love it. Trust me. Okay. So when you're traveling with people, I know we've talked about like kind of traveling solo and you said you've only done like the one solo trip. 
So I take it to mean that you enjoy traveling with others more than traveling solo? You know what? I don't I don't think it's I enjoy it one way or the other. I think most times if I'm going somewhere, mm. I typically end up going with somebody. Is it because people invite themselves or you like <laughs> invite them? Uh well, we are in a in a the travel norm in Kuwait is like people just travel, right? So mm-hmm. if they're going somewhere, I'm going somewhere, you just start inviting yourselves on people's trips. And then as life has it, things come up, so maybe what you where you thought you were going to go, you can't go now because of work or like time frames or something. Mm-hmm. I want to do more solo travel. However, I'm always thinking about, okay, I only have this many days that I can go. How can I flip it? What do I have going on responsibility wise? And I think for me, I don't end up actually prioritizing myself. Mm -hmm. So I'll go on another trip with somebody else and I'll have a good time. But I think like sometimes when you do a solo trip, you get way more out of that trip because it's all about you. Yeah. And I end up going on like fun trips or because I have, think I have a little bit of FOMO, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, if they all go here and I don't go, I won't be in on the stories. Right? And they're not bringing me back cheese either. So I got to go get my own cheese. If they're anything like you, you know they're not bringing you back cheese. They're not. So I got to go with them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what, what is the next trip that you think you want to do solo? Or what, what is one trip that you just feel like you need to do alone? Oh, good question. Solo trip that I want to do alone. As pro-black as I've been, and I am, and I've sounded, um, there are some African countries that I probably wouldn't go to by myself. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more of like how quickly the climate changes there. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in going anywhere in Europe besides Budapest. Okay. And maybe Prague. I guess, I don't know, is Prague a good... Wander by yourself place. Totally. There's so much packed into Prague that you could wander around and just enjoy it. It seemed fairly safe. It seemed to me like a petty crime place. Like Ah, any tourist destination, just keep your bag. Otherwise, you're going to get like pickpocketed type thing. But it didn't seem like a place that I'd be frightened to walk alone at Mm -hmm. dark. But someone might need to fact check me. I just felt safe. Oh, you know, I think I said I wanted to do Zanzibar. I could do Zanzibar as a solo, but I would do that as like a beach holiday. So oh, okay. I would just like literally... You go to the beach by yourself? Yes. I think that's a great place to go by yourself. Oh, you know what? So I went to Okinawa by myself and I realized beach holidays to me need to be shared because I don't like being at the beach anyway. So now I'm at the beach <laughs> and by myself and I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? Why? Right. Okay. No, I, for me, I'm mm-hmm. going to lay there. Put my headphones on, get some sun, read a book, Mm -hmm. walk to a pool, order some drinks, get tipsy, go back to my room, shower, sleep, wake up, do it all over again. Throw some massages in. For me, that but that's restoration to me, which is probably why I liked Bali, because all I did there was massages. I did a couple of the spiritual jaunts. Um, Oh, Bali was actually one of my favorite trips Mm -hmm. because I did like, um, I went to like one of those, what are they called? Balinese? The spiritual guides. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I did like the whole Reiki uh, thing. I got my chakras realigned. Nice. I got my spirit all re-cleansed and stuff. I came back and I looked amazing. It was almost like I lost weight. I think I lost weight. I was toned. I was well rested. <laughs> I was glowing and I was hydrated. You just lost all that negative energy. Right, like what more could you want in life? I came back like, <sighs> I'm unbothered. How can I help you today? That's amazing. Actually, I, I think I need that in my life again. You should do it. I wish I would have had a similar situation in Bali because I don't think I came back feeling smaller, <laughs> unburdened, lighter, or glowy. Or hydrated. Or hyd- Oh, God, no. That's because you came back with open wounds, <laughs> <laughs> scratches. It was like you had been to war. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So I guess Tanzania probably would be my mm-hmm. solo trip that I could look forward to. Oh, that sounds like fun, though. Yeah. So just for the beach. I'm, I'm going to ask you this about every place, why you want to go there. And I'm always excited to hear you say, just no reason. <laughs> just want to go. I also think that like one of the best things about travel is just going. Sometimes, yeah. I, and then I research once I'm there just so I can have some orientation. But it's just like showing up and being like, oh, okay. All right. I could see that. There's no place that I wouldn't want to go. Right. Like if I was there, I'm sure I could enjoy anywhere given the right circumstances, but 
I could, so I get what you're saying. But then when I talk about like where I want to go, I almost feel like I need to have something in my mind, even if it's like tenuous at best. Right. But I mean, that's different categories of travelers. Some people just really like to show up and just go. Some people like to really plan. Some people just like, they, they have an outline and they go and they move around. So there's no wrong way for me. Like I have my own opinions on it. Mm -hmm. How you feel when you're in a different place is how you feel. I mean, it's your money to spend, but I think that she should really like, I just like to show up and like, okay, this is it. And then talk to people and I kind of go where they suggest mm -hmm. to go. Okay. So then what do you have to carry with you to make sure that once you get to wherever you're going, surprise, I'm here, that it's going to be a good trip? Uh, my cell phone. That's it? With T-Mobile Wi-Fi, yes. Man, T-Mobile's free uh, <laughs> d international data plan. Such a lifesaver. Because buying new SIM cards every place you go and still getting slow internet was not really what life is about. True, because the way, I mean, we have T-Mobile, so there's no, mm. I can't, we can't speak on anything else. But you get T-Mobile Plus or mm -hmm. T-Mobile One Plus. So you get the, the two times the speed. So you get like 4G speed. Mm -hmm. However, it's weird though because some places you show up, like when we went to Barcelona, I had to then pay an additional $5 a day. For the 2G. It, so I could like actually download slow, something. Though. Like even after I uh, got the Right, we were burning internet, through it. In like a minute. We went through it in an afternoon. But other places I've been, I had like, where was it? Actually, Switzerland good experience. I was using Google Maps like it was going out of style and it was just directing me never losing internet. It worked in London and Paris as well. Mm. You know, we never talk about Paris. Paris was one of those trips that um, I was supposed to plan it. And even though I bare bone planned it, we were so tired from London that to see everything they offered, I just feel like you'd probably either have to go back again to yeah. redo it to actually like... I do need to go back because by then... It wasn't just, like, I was tired from our London itinerary, but I think um, jet lag had hit me. Oh, yeah. And then we didn't, I will say, I didn't know where we were going, and the uh, the lack of, like, concrete information on top of the jet lag and the exhaustion, and I was like, fuck it, I give up. Paris who? Oh, we did the hop on, hop off bus there. That was fun. Oh, my goodness, when they hit the car. He was just like, fuck it, bump, get out my way. I'm going this way. Boom, move, boom. I was like, he's just going to keep it in these cars, okay. Right? I was like, does property damage mean nothing here? Nothing. And then we were there, was it the end of the World Cup? It was the end of, I don't know if it was the World Cup, but you know, they, they have so many football leagues. Maybe just Europe. the end of like FIFA or something. But all night, Listen, someone was outside of our hostel. Yeah, it could have been a regular season. I don't True. know. It could have been Premier League. It could have been like any of those leagues. They love them. Who knows? But all night, ole, 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 ole. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, that's fine. Like the first 15 times, but can we like throw a verse in the middle of this? <laughs> Just... You guys don't have any other words for that song. But who who has the energy to do that for like five hours straight? Somebody that's been drinking and their team is playing. I guess. No, but Paris was interesting. I do want to do it again. I did, I enjoyed Versailles. However, I, I'm sad that we didn't get out to see the uh, the gardens, but by that point, I was hungry. I think we were all hungry. And it was a long little jaunt to get there. It was cool. Their public transportation left a little bit to be desired after London. So, I, so that is the other thing. It's like the things that you like to do to get a lay of the land, right? So you kind of know where you're at. You cannot leave a place that has amazing transportation. And go to a place that doesn't. Right. Because I'll say it again. I think London has probably bar none one of the best transportation systems in the world. It was so easy to navigate. We were just going, getting around. Struggled in Paris. I like Japan's system. It's pretty good. But also the language barrier of not being able to read anything. So I think that might have also contributed to London. Just being mm -hmm. able to understand what's in front of you. This is true. You could translate easy. It, it does make a lot of... So that's why I say my cell phone because you have your translator app, you have your conversion app, mm -hmm. you have music if you need it, you have maps, you have Google. Mm -hmm. And when you're just showing up to, to make it worthwhile, like those are just... So I guess it would be what apps do I need on my phone okay. to make it work? So you need like a translator app. Google Translate works. Um, 
a conversion app so you know how to convert the money. So important. Yeah, because it is really important to know what you're spending, unless you're spending on your credit card and you keep checking to make sure. You know what? So Capital One sends me a text message every time I swipe my card to let me know. So that's a very important. Then that's another really good thing to have. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have a card, if it's your bank card or your credit card, that have um, no foreign transaction fees. True. The worst thing is to keep accruing those fees Mm -hmm. every time you swipe your card. I have a a Chase Sapphire Preferred. Mm -hmm. I think the Chase uh, Freedom Unlimited is... Also a good one. I have that one, but I don't really use it. Uh, the American Express Platinum or Gold cards are transaction or free transactions. The Capital One Venture. Is f- I think all of Capital One's cards okay. don't do internet. Well, I don't quote me on it, but I feel like... They're going to quote you on it, though. Well, I mean, don't? <laughs> no, I feel like they don't do international transaction fees on theirs. Okay, so then there's that. And then... Um, yeah, just make sure, and then your banks, your particular bank account, you need to make sure that you have cash or it's not going to charge you the international fee plus the ATM withdrawal fee. I mean, some are just going to charge you that, but $5 so you have some money is fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, we'll have to chat more about like money and travel because that is a serious thing. It is. That could really like jack you up. <laughs> I mean, it, we've talked about it. It's done that to us before. <laughs> but those are stories for another day. So that's all. Bye.